Stressed out? Need sleep? The cold weather bringing out those aches and pains or arthritis? There's never been a better time to try cannabis. Check out the greenhouse of Walled Lake and learn about the natural way to relax and escape all that 2020 stress. The greenhouse is locally owned and they love helping people who are new to cannabis. They've got a great flower selection of the best Michigan grown buds and the biggest pre-roll selection around. Don't want to smoke? No problem. There's vape carts, tinctures, concentrates, and everyone's favorite, edibles, like gummies, chocolates, peppermint bark, breath sprays, even the original Mackinac Island fudge. So check out the greenhouse of Walled Lake. 21 and over welcome, no med card needed. They also offer senior and veterans discounts and have a great loyalty rewards program. The Greenhouse of Walled Lake. That's greenhousemi.com. Hey, greetings, everybody. Craig Folly here. Welcome to another episode of the week that was on Deadline Detroit. Glad to have you with us on this Friday. And many of you maybe saw that commercial right there for the House of Wall Lake and are thinking about what you're going to do this evening. I'm not sure. Nancy, Darren, of course, one of my esteemed panelists is dying over here. I just love I just love that there's an edible called Mackinac Island Fudge. Uh, it I looked like. delicious, did it not? I mean, you know, hey, what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, well, this show basically is pretty simple. We break down the big stories of the week. And of course, towards the end, we nominate our schmucks of the week. So make sure you stay tuned for that a little bit later on in the show. But I should introduce my colleagues here today. Of course, we have Alan Langle, who is the editor and co-founder of Deadline Detroit, as he is with us every week. Hello, sir. Hello, Happy hello, Hanukkah. Hello. Yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. Nancy Derringer, Deadline Detroit contributor and the author of the 313 Deadline newsletter, which you should subscribe to. Really good every week. Thanks, Nancy. He's still on the site. Thank you. All right. Returning guest, Steve Fishman, of course, noted defense attorney, a man who has read a legal brief or two. So we're going to rely on a bit of his expertise today. Thank you for being here, sir. Appreciate it. Pleasure is mine. Augusto Esmeo. And of course, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist M.L. Elric of the Detroit Free Press and M.L. Soul of Detroit podcast, which you should also subscribe to and check out every week. Uh, goes live Tuesdays, correct? Uh, we do Facebook Live on Tuesdays and the show posts sometime later. Or if we've gone to the greenhouse of Walled Lake, whenever the hell we feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate everybody being here today. And uh, I guess the big story this week is... Um, Legal challenges that have been going nowhere for the Trump administration. Now, this is the last Hail Mary attempt. This would be bigger than the miracle in Music City, I think, if indeed somehow the Supreme Court were to take up this bizarre case from the state of Texas, which has since been signed on to by 17 other states, uh, at least the attorneys general of those states. And, of course, 106 members of the Republican House of Representatives, uh, House of Representatives, members of the Republican Party, uh, 90 of them did not sign on to this. They must be in competitive districts, I think. Uh, but at the same time, it says a lot about where we are right now. There is a huge chunk of the Republican Party that is trying to overturn a, a just cleanly contested election. Uh, there is no denying that this election was won fair and square by Joe Biden at this point in time, but there's still a lot of people Fake that news. Won't accept it. Yeah, well, okay, there you go, ML. You get to go first. Uh, this sort of um, psychology around denying what is just so freaking obvious is, is just boggling to me. Well, I was watching Newsmax broadcasting from uh, Hangar 18 in Area 51, <laughs> and and they said that that JFK actually won because he's been on an island for the last 60 years advising American presidents using uh, the top of a pineapple to close the wound in his head. So I don't know where you guys get your news, but this thing is not over. We need to count all the votes, and the votes for Trump we need to count twice. <laughs> and that's all I have to say on the matter. You know, or, by the way, I'm seriously mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, worse than that, you can say you got to go vote. Uh, the the Trump votes, uh, you know, twice, but I'm thinking this feels a lot more like three fifths. Uh, you know, they only want to cut the Democrats three fifths because there's there's a lot of racism behind this. Th thinking that hey, the black voters cheated and somehow rigged the election because that's what this is about. It's about Detroit. It's about Milwaukee. It's about Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. And you know, for them to sit there and suggest that only those are the places where this fraud could have happened, and if we just overturn that, everything's going to be fine. Uh, and, and people just don't want to see it. And Nancy, I mean, you've been, you've been bitching about this for three weeks now and, and you're absolutely right. Well, it's, it's, I mean, you know, that's a very, that's a little funny, that's a funny bit that ML did there, but I mean, this is serious business. I follow some people on Twitter. I kind of lurk a little bit, um, to see what they're thinking. And 
these people live in a media universe that bears no, that does not orbit in the, it's not even in our solar system. I mean, it's, it's just, it's way the hell out there. And they believe this stuff. Okay. They really do believe that this, this election was rigged and stolen and a fraud and everything else. And, you know, somebody's going to get hurt behind this, but more to the point, I mean, for those of us who work in what we used to think of as traditional, you know, mainstream media sources, we've got problems, man. We're not, these people aren't coming back to us. They're going where they will hear what they want to hear. And when, you know, the, what's the old line, you're allowed to have your own opinion, but not your own facts. It's like that ship sailed, man. It's like everybody feels like they can have the facts that they want and that's, and they will find them. And they'll well, be no, it's, da- it's dangerous when you see not only, I mean, the Supreme Court case, which is just insanity, where it's just all this conjecture of like, how could he have gone to, you know, how could he have been ahead the night before? And then what? They counted the ballots and suddenly right. they count the FCC ballots. We knew that was going to happen. We predicted it beforehand. I, th- I believe they say in, in the suit, they say that no uh, president has ever won Florida and Ohio and not won the election when, in fact, Nixon uh, did win Win that, and he and lost the Kennedy. 1960 election. Yeah. Uh, and, and and eight, Eighteen attorney generals and over 100 members of Congress, and then you have local lawmakers who are really uh, giving some legitimacy to the to the insanity of it. it. It's really you know when you have 18 attorney generals that are supposed to be upholding the law. Although look, the Texas attorney general is under FBI investigation, <laughs> so we don't have a lot of high standards for him, but. It's well, just, it's just insane, and it, it gives the the optics uh, just feed into the the conspiracy theories that look, all these people are legitimate people, and they believe it. Well, Steve, Steve Fishman, I, I want to get your opinion on this because reading those briefs, I mean, every legal expert I've seen just says they are, first of all, written by a, a legal equivalent of a kindergartner. Um, but they're just they're, there's nothing in there that would suggest that there's any evidence. And in fact, this latest one from Texas says that the uh, that they did such a good job with the fraud that the evidence is is invisible. <laughs> they're arguing there's no way it's undetectable fraud. Um, first of all, I've never seen fraud that was undetectable. Uh, usually that stuff gets found out, but that's what they're alleging is that the fraud was so insidious that they've made it so hard to find that you could never prove that it actually happened. And, and I'm sorry, I'm not sure there's a judge in the world, uh, that would listen to that with any level of seriousness. At least I'm hoping that's the case. Well, I I don't know if there are any judges in the world, but I don't think the nine justices of the Supreme court are going to listen to it. We were discussing it today in the gym. A number of lawyers, including a couple of judges, and what we all kind of concluded, we want more than just that one-page order denying like they did with the Pennsylvania case. They they need, and I, I got to believe, uh, this was me more than it was everybody else, I think that the Chief Justice, who seems to have some sense of not wanting to look like an asshole on the pages of history, I, I got to believe that they would like to write something. I'd like to see him write something similar to what the Court of Appeals wrote in the Pennsylvania case, which makes it absolutely clear. There's not, it's not any bizarre, oh, with it, it's only one page. Who knows what they really think? Maybe six of them wanted to do it and somehow two of them had pistols held to their head or whatever. I would like to see them write, they don't have to write War and Peace, but I'd like to see them lay it out. Just exactly what you guys are saying and what every single legal expert has said. If you're watching, I don't care if it's MSNBC or CNN or as long as it's not, what do you call it, Newsmax, ML? Yeah. As long as it's not that, yeah, anybody who's a real lawyer is, is going to knows what time it is. And I think it would be good for the country. It's not going to change. I agree with Nancy and, and all of you guys. It's not going to change the, the, the diehards, the ones who only get their, quote, news from places like Newsmax. It's funny, by the way, we don't even say Fox News anymore. How crazy is that? By yeah. The way. yeah. But I, I think it would be helpful and I hope that they do it. It doesn't have to be a lengthy one, but I, I think they should knock down all of those arguments. Boom, boom, boom. There's no evidence. There's no legal theory. And therefore, get the hell out of here and let's get on with the inauguration. How about that statement? I'd like to just see a one-liner. It's like, oh, fuck no. I mean, something like that. <laughs> it's signed John Roberts and the rest of the court. and all the signatures well, on there it, but, would but be I'll outstanding. You, let me just tell you quickly. Uh, uh, the, the problem with that is that it's, it's easy for those of us who've had experience in court. You don't have to necessarily be a lawyer. But if you've had experience 
with the courts and you've reviewed opinions, whether you, you know, you're in you guys' business or you're in my business. We all know that, that that's a slap down. We know that where they tell them, get the fuck out of here. That's a slap down. But I think for the regular folk, not just, not for the crazies, but just for people in general, they should see that the United States Supreme Court with six conservatives, three appointed by the orange man, which nine of them have said, ba boom, ba boom. That's that's why I think it'd be a good idea. Yeah, and and I I think Steve is has a shot at getting what he wants because one thing we've seen is that John Roberts and I think this was written about by Linda Greenhouse of the New York Times. No relation to the sponsor <laughs> that, that that Roberts, who at one time was the arch conservative on the court, has kind of drifted to the middle. Still extremely conservative. So don't fool yourself but that he has evolved to a point where he sees his role as chief justice and he's spoken out in a way that previous chief justices were reluctant to, to establish that the Supreme court is a separate, well, it's been established in the constitution, but to underscore that the Supreme yeah. court is a separate branch of government that will not be influenced by politics and will really resist any effort to put the taint of politics on them. And I think if he proposes something like that, uh, there are two justices who might not go along with it, both of whom got shoved through. But I would think that uh, he's going to get everybody, uh, but maybe Alito and Coney Barrett and uh, and uh, what's the Thomas. what's the guy who likes beer? Kavanaugh. Uh, Kavanaugh. But Gorsuch has shown a little bit of independence, and uh, and even Kavanaugh has on a couple of things. And I guess Coney Barrett, you know, on the few things that have come before her, has ruled in a way that Trump would have said. That's not what I asked you to do. But but I think Steve is right. This is a point where somebody has to say, we are the court of last appeal. You've appealed to us to do the right thing. We are doing the right thing. And the right thing is to repudiate every single thing you have asked us to do. And that the lemmings lining up behind you can go off the cliff, but they're not going to drag this country with it. I, I think, I, I do think... Uh, if they do it, I think it'll be nine, nine to nothing. I really do. I think that they'll all agree. And I, I, I don't really believe that. I, I, well, as an aside, there's no doubt in my mind, is there in any of yours, when Trump appointed those three people, I guarantee if you put them on a polygraph, not that he pathological liars can be polygraphed, but How would you judge he, that? He, he believes for sure that they owe him and that the three of them absolutely have to vote for him and write an opinion because he doesn't know shit from Shinola about the law other than one of these days he's going to have to answer to it, we hope. Uh, but I, I, I believe that that's what he absolutely thinks. When he sends these tweets out, finally, we got to where we want to go. That's what he thinks. He thinks he owns those three people. And I think well, it's going to be nine to nothing. It's I funny. think it's pretty clear from the way he's ruled. I mean, with, with Jim Comey, with Jeff Sessions, he's, he's sent a clear message to anyone who works for him that they have to be 100% loyal and and the supreme court is just an extension of of all that you know? did anybody explain to him that once these people are confirmed you can't fire them i mean what does he think how do you get leverage over somebody who has lifetime you know job you security yeah. you don't I mean, well uh, prosecutors in new york are familiar with families and organizations and this one is actually called the trump organization it may very well be a rico uh, but um, but i i do think I, I, I hope Steve is right that if the Supreme Court does speak, it speaks with one voice. Yeah. And if I were those people who were put on the court by Trump, I might say to myself, even if I was a little soft on this, this is a chance for me for the rest of my career to eliminate any question of fealty to the person who put me here. Because I'm sure that in their own way, they're all qualified. But I've got to believe that everybody, everybody but I think Gorsuch has got to feel like everything I do, they're going to say he's there, the, they're the tainted justice, even though he got the Merrick Garland seat. But, but, but they're going to feel like, you know, for the rest of my life, I have the shadow of Trump hanging over me. And, and a lot of women will tell you, you do not want Trump hanging around you that closely. <laughs> Wait, let, let me throw one other thing in there. What ML is saying, the, the, these are very, very, very conservative people. Obviously, they couldn't have got to that position. The Federalist Society wouldn't have nominated them. But there's a big difference between ruling for corporations, ruling against, you know, uh, all kinds of things that might be liberal minded things and undermining the democracy. They, they certainly know if we all know just from the stuff we've read, they know there's not a whit 
of accuracy or truth to any of this in terms of the filing. And I just really believe, I mean, even Clarence Thomas, you can't be much worse than him. He, he's, he kind of gets a pass a little bit now because Alito goes and makes these speeches yeah. about Christianity and all, but then there's never been anybody worse than Thomas as far as I'm concerned. But they all have some fidelity, I believe, to the notion of democracy and to the notion of the court, just as ML saying, standing above it. So they don't want to hear, even though they have lifetime tenure, they don't want to have to read and hear how you're just a whore for Trump. Of all people, by the way. Well, but you know, and Trump really, knows a little bit about whores. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> but, the, but the people that are following—I mean, the people that are that are signing on to this document, all these all these 106 legislators and these attorneys general uh, that have signed on to this thing—they are afraid of that base that Trump has amassed. They are afraid that if they go against him in any capacity, that they are going to turn against him. And and I'm trying to think to myself how these people allowed themselves to be played by Trump the way that they have and OAN and, and Newsmax and places like this. These are people that I used to know to be somewhat rational people. And they are so far off the deep end right now. I don't recognize some of these people anymore. It's, it's almost as if somebody had like a, an implant clicked in their, in their brain and then they just flipped on the light switch. And all of a sudden these people just realized zombies for Trump, Trump, Trump. I don't recognize before. some of my old friends anymore. It just doesn't make any sense. Hey, we've seen this before. There was not a line of people uh, in Congress to denounce McCarthy on his first day. Exactly. It, it takes a while. And, and guess who has to take him down? It has to be somebody like an Eisenhower saying something. Or it has to be somebody like Edward R. Murrow, who was a hero. And by the way, people don't seem to remember this. Edward R. Murrow's career went into a twilight after that. So he not only did the right thing, but he paid a terrible price for it. Right. Very true. You know, I think by the time we're our age, we've all come across, we've all had an experience with a friend who has fallen to addiction, shall we say, you know, or, or fallen into addiction. And at some point, you know, you have to say, I, I'm done with you until you, you know, get it together. I mean, you've got to clean up, you've got to go to rehab, you got to do what, but I can no longer be an enabler of you. And I think that's where we are with some of these Trump people, you know? You know, it's got to be more than just that. unfriending them on Facebook. I mean, there's the Betty, no the Betty Ford Clinic. I'm interested in you guys' opinion. Uh, it seems to me, and you know, I've actually been watching the news on television for the first time in 30 years since I'm the sorry, election. Steve. MSNBC and CNN, because I find a lot of interesting stuff. But what what do we believe? Do we really believe that? Like with your friends, Craig, do you think that Trump just out of the clear blue sky came and was able to twist them around 180 degrees from the people you knew? Or do you think, like Nancy was suggesting, people were moving in that direction on their own. People were having racial attitudes on their own. People were thinking they were being disrespected by the elites on their own. This guy's a Huey Long, Joe McCarthy, you know, a demagogue for sure. And he's a very talented demagogue. And of course, we know he's a career criminal. But the people were there beforehand. At least that's what I think. I'm fascinated with what you guys think. Yeah, I mean, I can see it. And, and I understand why some of the people that I know support Trump support him. They were rich to begin with. They got richer underneath this guy. They like that a whole bunch. Um, the other stuff is not the type of thing they normally would have said in polite company, but they have started saying it openly. And I mean, they're exposing a lot of those tendencies that they probably had before that they kept hidden for a long time. Something allowed this stuff to bubble to the surface in a way that it hasn't before. And, and I'm just, I'm a little shocked and, and very disappointed in a ton of people that they have just basically given over their own ability to think to something that is so obviously false and wrong. Um, and, and they've been seduced by, I mean, look, he Dr. is, for, what, what, for whatever uh, the jerk factor is there, he's a charismatic guy. He's, he's magnetic. I mean, when he comes on TV, people turn on the TV as much, and, and people are, you know, even who hate him, uh, watch him. I mean, it's been, it's been really great for the Washington Post, New York Times, CNN. Uh, I, I think they kind of got their mojo back as a result of him being out there is that he is an entertainer. He sucks up every news cycle. Uh, that's what, you know, when, when Obama came here, he said, uh, with Joe Biden, he said, you know, you're not going to worry. You're not going to be thinking every day about Joe Biden. There's some days you're not even going to know he's around. He's just going to be doing his job. But Trump, Hallelujah. every news cycle. And, and there's some appeal to that, that people love that charisma. They love the swagger. They love, 
you know, the trash talk. It's, well, keep, it's, you know, keep it on reality TV, though. I mean, that's that's what that stuff's for. That's what Real Housewives are for and stuff like that. You know, and, and uh, Big Brother and those kinds of shows. It should not be our political life and it should not be our presidency. Um, and I just I do want to ask this question, though, because the word I've seen thrown around quite a bit in the last couple of days is sedition. And what these attorneys general and what these legislators are doing in advocating for an overthrow of the election, they call this seditious activity. Does everybody agree that this rises to the level of sedition? I do. I, I do for sure. I'll take I, the I, lawyer's word on that one. Yeah, I'll go with the lawyers. <laughs> I, 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 I just I never agree here. It's so I'll, insane. I'll defer to counsel. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, the, the scariest part is that we see. As we say before, we, we're seeing intelligent people who are jumping on, on board here, who are saying, hey, it's not over yet. I, you know, I talked to somebody yesterday. They're like, hey, it's not over yet. You know, we've got all these attorney generals and we've got all these Congress members who are backing it. So and I'm like, I will give you one hundred fifty dollars. It's not even a bet. I said, if the Supreme Court takes a case, I will give you one hundred fifty dollars, period. You know, can I, 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 editor, can I correct you? It's attorneys general. I, just, I you know what? I hate that. I it is such an awkward wording that <laughs> I, I, I wrote it in a story, but I find it so awkward. Attorney general, why would it not be attorney generals? It's because it's attorneys are the plural, mother's in law, not mother. Can, can we go back? I, I want to hear ML's I, opinion. I cast a protest over that. <laughs> can, can, can we go back to this issue? You, you, you mentioned reality TV and things of that nature. I want to hear your opinion, ML, because you deal with uh, all kinds of people all the time. Don't you or do you agree with what I was saying earlier that maybe it's the reality TV mentality, whatever it is, these people that support this guy were ready for it. It wasn't just him out of the clear blue sky. Yeah. So I, I wanted to turn it back to you, Steve. And I'm wondering if you've ever done uh, a social experiment on your own where somebody makes a Jewish joke to you and you mm -hmm. don't tell them that you're Jewish. Langle and I have both done that many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what what happens when you do, you get another Jewish joke, right? Absolutely, that's but exactly. When you right. tell them, when you tell them, I'm a proud Jew, and that's offensive, you don't hear from them. What's well, going on in this country now is nobody's saying I'm Jewish, and that's offensive, and we're hearing this crap all the time, and we're finding out just how many people don't say, Oh, I'm sorry, I I didn't realize. They're saying, No, no, it's cool, and now right. I'm going to yell it. And I don't want to give up the right to yell whatever the hell comes into my head. So I will pretend that the set of facts before me that is unimpeachable, although I guess it, some of these things were impeachable, it turns <laughs> out, but um, that, that, that I, I just want to be, I just want to be, I just want to express my id so much that I'm going to ignore everything I can just so I can, to keep with the metaphor, continue to tell all the Jewish jokes I want, no matter who they offend, no matter how harmful they are. I've got how, matter how much they put my ignorance on display. People it's, have been waiting for a chance to do this. That's why they know, hated Obama, because Obama just said, you know, use curly light bulbs and let's treat each other decently. And they're like, I love the curly light bulbs. And when I get my chance, I'm not going to treat anybody decently. I, I think it's been a truism on Twitter that people voted for Trump because he gave them permission to hate all the people that they already secretly hated. And I think that's true. The other thing is who would tell a Jewish joke to somebody named Fishman? Somebody who doesn't understand Jewish I would. So, <laughs> I grew up in Gross Point and went to school with Deb Fishman. And because yeah. Gross Point is so waspy, I didn't know until like eighth grade, Deb, was... Deb Fishman is Jewish. I was like, Jewish. I read the chosen. I didn't see Deb what Fishman in there. there. You know what? When I was in, well, when I was when I was in DC at the Washington Post, I was interviewing the head of the ATF for the Washington Field Office, and we were and his press guy was there. And I said to him, he was a good guy from Chicago, a good Irish man. And and I said to him, I said, when you're doing undercover buys, you pretend like you're you you care about the price. Do you negotiate? Try to negotiate with the drug dealers. And he looked at me and he said, he goes, sometimes we try to chew him down. And, yeah. and I couldn't even look up. And yeah. I looked at the corner of my eye at his press guy and he was looking down. And I could <laughs> have had a good front page story, but I thought, all right, that's just ignorance. People I, are ignorant. Well, well, let's, let's hey, Craig, before we go to the next thing, oh, can you man. back me? Deb Fishman is a good basketball player, right? Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so what is it with these these Jewish fishermen in basketball? They're all really <laughs> good. It all, it all came from Herman Fishman. I don't know. I think. <laughs> his pictures I just, right you know, here. His naval picture and his Hall of Fame picture are all right here. <laughs> While we're on the record, I just wanted to get that down. Okay. All right. Well, I, I want to get back to this, this sort of a, is a nice little tangent here to make because, you know, we talk about people wanting to be able to scream these things out loud, and then they do. Some people do push back, and we saw that from Representative Cynthia Johnson from Detroit the other day. She pushes back. She gets death threats, people calling her the N-word, all sorts of things. She goes then on and puts out a Facebook post saying, hey, watch yourself. You know, I'm, don't play around with me. If you're going to threaten me, I'm going to fight back in some capacity. So what happens? Lee Chatfield strips her committee assignments from her the other day saying, oh, she reacted poorly. I'm like, Real, are you really that butt hurt, Chatfield, that somebody actually called out your supporters for being for making violent, racist threats that you're going to take her committee assignments away from her? Can I make a point here This that goes back to what I was saying earlier about the media sphere they live in? This, I, I, I really want to recommend a story that ran in Michigan Advance yesterday by Todd Haywood, who is mm -hmm. a, a contributor, about how this happened. And what somebody did was they took away the whole beginning of that three-minute statement where she talks about how, you know, hit him in the pocketbook, et cetera. And they just took the last couple lines and they edited that. And then she added, the person added a title underneath it said, uh, words of a domestic terrorist, and then launched it with, you know, on a rocket into the far right whack job media sphere. And that, that is when Lee Chatfield and Mike Shirky and all of their friends started to see it. And that is what led them to do this. And that speaks once again to the power of this, this, you know, this Borg that's out there. The that media is, sphere. Yeah, this, this media sphere. And it's, it's scary. Because that's not what she said. Anybody with a functioning brain could have watched that th whole three-minute thing and, and understood exactly what she was saying. Well, and anybody with half a brain would respect her for saying what she said in the face of the threats that she yes. had received. And, and you know, for daring to actually ask questions of these quote-unquote witnesses at the hearing uh, the other day in Lansing. Um, and, and again, for her to be stripped of her, of her committee seats is just... Uh, uh, again, another act of, of cowardice and, and uh, you know, no, no, what capitulating, is... capitulating to the to the right wing uh, nut jobs out there that Chatfield has been doing his entire career. What price is he going to pay for that? None. Nothing. Nothing. Was Johnson the rep that came to the state house with uh, an armed escort after the first protest when people were bringing weapons into the state house? Does anybody remember that? I, I remember, remember someone did, but I don't remember. Yeah, there was there. a Detroit rep who brought basically, you know, sort of some black steel with them to to escort them in. Her. I don't know if, if that was her or not, but I remember people being upset by that. And I remember thinking, boy, you weren't that upset when the, when the guys with with uh, long beards and camo were stomping we're all gallery. over the place with the ARs. Gallery. Mm -hmm. Pointing, you know, with the weapons that could easily shoot down into a pit, which is underneath. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, it's let, pretty let, ridiculous. Let me, let me toss this out, out, too. It's interesting that she had this kind of a feedback to, and, and I didn't know, Nance, until you just said it, that there were two minutes and 45 seconds before. To me, what she said, forget the two minutes and 45 seconds. You're goddamn right that's what she should say. It, which brings us to Jocelyn Benson's house, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn Benson's husband, who I do not know, I understand it was a, was a Marine, yeah. right? Yeah, he's Can you imagine military. this guy sitting That's in his house yeah. with his four-year-old and his wife, and these idiots are out there marching around, screaming around in their arm, and the self-control, a Marine, the self-control he must have exhibited not to go outside in front of the house with whatever he keeps in the house, which I, most Marines keep something in the house, and say, you guys want a piece of this? Are you kidding? That's... <laughs> that's to me, when I when I heard that this was his background, I'm thinking this man's got some self control. Actually, I, I, think he was in he was even, I don't even think he was a marine. I think he's like special forces or something. You know, he's well, he's, like, he's elite level. Yeah, he's, he, exactly. but he's also a very nice guy. I, I did work with him for a little while and, and know him. Um, he's 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 a very even keeled kind we, of. We know person. a couple I, lawyer. We know a couple lawyer marines we could send out there. Yeah, yeah exactly. But I, I believe we don't want to do that now to him. I believe that he was in Afghanistan when uh, Benson was the dean of the Wayne State Law School. So this guy has seen uh, unreasonable, unbalanced people yelling incoherently. Um, so I, I would say that isn't the first time it's happened. But can you imagine facing a country that's completely in chaos, where there's no structure, there's no guaranteed of minimum human rights, 
and then to come home to America and say, where am I again? <laughs> didn't, didn't I just leave this? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you know what? Comparison. That's interesting because if you just extrapolate a little bit about 80 years, you could have been like my father-in-law who was in the segregated part of the military in Europe during World War II and came home to see what? This is America that I was just over there risking my life for, and now I got to sit at a separate lunch counter. You know, so yeah. there's some there's some history to this too. This is not new. Well, let, let's st let's stay in Lansing for a little bit because um, we were talking about Cynthia Johnson. She was taking part in that hearing last week in Lansing, in which uh, Miss Carone was there, uh, and Rudy brought us the gift that keeps on giving: COVID. Rudy catches COVID and, of course, probably uh, creates a super spreader event in the Capitol in Lansing. In fact, Lansing right now is a COVID hotspot. At least the Capitol building is. There's a number of cases there. Uh, the legislature still trying to figure out after how many months? How can we proceed safely? Oh, you're just trying to figure this shit out now? But Rudy brought COVID uh, or maybe it got it there. Who knows? But Melissa Carone. This or yeah, that was her name, right? Melissa. Yeah. Uh, she refuses to quarantine because she's just her um but you know it's just at what point at what point are people going to figure this out that maybe just maybe wearing a mask is a good idea well so I, we've been I, asking I, this question for months yeah, yeah i feel so, like we're, we're just we're plowing the same furrow I, 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 we are but but this was new rudy rudy oh. brought it to a new level yeah i wish no nothing no harm to come to to rudy giuliani but i i, I have to say a tough bout wouldn't bother me a whole lot i wish him well, a bad yeah. cough and difficulty breathing I, i'm I just really i'm just having i'm i'm reviewing uh, rudy's recent life and he's sitting here saying i imagine him saying uh and because i believe he's a catholic that he's on his knees with his rosary and he says god if i'm doing the wrong thing send me a sign uh, have uh, have my hair start to melt if I'm doing <laughs> the wrong thing. And then then his hair starts to melt. He goes, God, I I know you listen to all prayers and you 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 bring comfort to all men and and my ex-wives. Um I, I I'm going to be in Lansing, Michigan. If this isn't the right thing to do, God will will you send me a sign? You you sent a flood to Noah, you sent a pestilence, you really screwed around with Moses. <laughs> but if there's something going on, would you, would you please just send me a sign? Maybe, maybe make my temperature go up a degree or, or perhaps a dry cough. But, but Lord, I beseech you, would you, would you please send me a sign? What I'm doing is wrong. And now he's in a hospital saying, uh, Lord, um, the, the cable isn't working in the ICU. <laughs> would you please get the view on for me? Lord, please. If you're listening, please. good luck, Rudy. <laughs> he he is well and the other thing the other thing is here we're we're confronting in rural michigan all over you know the dakotas and all these places that are just on fire with covid right now people are dying at home because they have no room there's no room at the inn there's no room at the icu right and here's rudy laying on his you know well paid ass up in new york or washington wherever the hell his home base is now getting Diamond level treatment, you know, the same thing that the president gets. Remdesivir. Yeah, remdesivir, you know, the all that stuff. And, you know, and nobody turns a hair. It's like, well, he's rich. He's Rudy. He should get that stuff. You know, if my grandmother or parent or whoever was dying in uh, in an ICU, even in an ICU, I would be, I'd, I'd be incandescent. It, Nancy, is it any wonder that these are the guys who say we don't need universal health care? Because, like, our system's oh, great. Everything yeah. Yeah. What's, the problem? Yeah. What's wrong with you people? Yeah. Just, well, that, that, I got here on Marine One. What's your problem? <laughs> I've, I've got a schmuck of the week a little bit later on that relates to that at very point. So uh, we will revisit that. But I mean, look, the COVID numbers, I, I do believe um, Centers for Disease Control, was it set, uh, CDC yesterday that said we're going to see basically the equivalent of a 9-11 death count every day for the next couple of months? Yes, mm -hmm. 60 to 90 um, days, they said. Turns out we just, did need all those extra ventilators after all, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. oh, my, my word. It's it's just, it's atrocious right now. I mean, the good news is we got the uh, emergency approval for the vaccine that's going to come down officially, I think, today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to start at least getting some of those frontline healthcare workers taken care of and some of those most at risk. Obviously, I'm way down on the list of when I'm going to be able to get this. So I'm preparing for basically a winter-long lockdown. Um, and, and I think that's what most of us are probably looking at at this point as well. Uh, 
what's everybody's confidence level that once January 20th comes around that we might see something a little bit more coherent in terms of a response? I, I, think, we're, I think we're going to have some national standards set, which has been gravely missing. I think the, the fact, I mean, the governor should have uh, been a little stronger and banded together to create their own universal uh, policies. But I think we're going to see a lot better leadership. I think we'll see Fauci really uh, back in the driver's seat. Uh, I think we'll see, a, I think we'll see a lot better, uh, a, a more coherent uh, policy. I think it'll help. Yeah. I yeah. mean, but I, I, I mean, so who's going to line up to get this when, when it's available to them? I, 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 I think, I think that I saw something the other day and maybe this is naive and maybe it's old fashioned, but they were saying something about that Clinton and Bush and Obama would be vaccinated on national television and let people see it. I still believe, even though Newsmax exists and OAN exists, there's still a large bulk of the population that I think once Trump is gone, because you have to be suspicious of everything he had anything to do with. Once the Biden administration comes in, the Pfizer guy I saw on, on television last night made a lot of sense. I thought he sounded like a normal person. And for those guys to come out and show everybody, look, we're, we're not stupid. We want to live too. We're going to take this vaccine. And, you know, I think that'll help a lot. I, I, I think things will be better once, once we get to the point where you can show to the public on a daily basis, the good part of it, rather than just ranting and raving and having people anti-vaxxers on, you know, on national right. television. Are you, uh, ML, I thought you had this, didn't you? Do you uh, have anybody? I, I did have it, but it was back in, in March, which is why Craig asked me to dial in today. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it, do I, I, I tested positive for antibodies at the end of June. I really should get checked again. But to Alan's point, Here's what should have happened. The minute I, I had uh, a positive test, forget that this should have been reported to some national database. But I mean, I, I took the test on camera at the state fairgrounds and did a story about it. So it's not really hard to find out what, what I went through. But the minute I was tested positive, that should have gone into a database. The minute that uh, my antibodies showed up, Somebody should have said, we want you to come back every month because we're trying to collect data to see how long these antibodies right. last. And the way we do that is we right. find you chumps with antibodies and we test you every month. And, 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 then, and then when you don't have them anymore, we're like, okay, and this guy it was three months. This guy was six months. This guy right. is two months. And we try and figure it out. Instead, this wealth of information. You know, the reason why people aren't dying as much now is because we've learned some things. But imagine and how much better off we'd be if we tried to learn – more, More things. Yeah. I mean, what's been learned has been hospital to hospital and through professional groups. I don't know that much of it's been coming from the White House Coronavirus Task Force. I mean, with Casper the Friendly Ghost as vice president, who's lost his voice in the last couple of months, perhaps that's a sign of coronavirus as you get laryngitis. Well, now he's <laughs> spreading it in Georgia. Good luck, folks. I don't think yeah. things are going to be peachy down there by the time this election is over. But why are people not collecting this? And I think we'll start to see that happen. And I think we're already seeing some leadership where we have somebody because we, you know, to, to go all the way back to what Steve brought up a while ago. And st why are we getting along so much, Steve? What the hell's going on here? This, this country is, this country has hope, I think. <laughs> and but, you got the state hat on too. It really makes and, it even worse. And you're watching TV. I mean, this is, you know, <laughs> is the reckoning just around the corner? But, um, but, but the thing is, is, is the bully pulpit, can be used for good as well. And, and I think we're going to see some of that, although it takes a long time to turn a battleship and inertia is a powerful force. But, um, you know, to me, if I was Biden, I would say we still have a PPE problem. Guess what? The War Powers Act, I'm aware of it because I was born during the First World War and I am going to institute it and we're going to make masks and we're going to make all that other stuff that we need in addition to ventilators that nobody's ever said, just make a shitload of N95 masks and put them on every corner with a table that says free take one because it's cheaper to give you a free mask than to put you in an ICU. Right. Well, yeah, I, the, our handling of this has been less than exemplary. Right. Um, you know, there's just nothing about this that, uh, uh, that couldn't right. be improved. But you have to recognize you have a problem to get a, so the, the alcoholics will tell you that. If you don't know you have a problem, you You're can't stop drinking. Problem. And we're I, drinking. You know, 
a friend of mine and I were talking about this the other day, and we've discussed it a couple times in the last few months, which is if Trump had just taken this seriously early on, had come out, had what the post office had this plan where they were going to mail five masks to every household in the country. I mean, if he had, if he had said, look, here's this thing, it's a mask and I, and, and put it on himself and said, yeah, it's a little uncomfortable depending on what you're doing. You know, it's not flattering to your face. I get it. But if we can all just do this for a few weeks, maybe a few months, we're going to, you know, we can get past this thing. He'd be the FDR of coronavirus and he would have walked into a second. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He can't he would have won. It's like he, 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 he misread he misread the whole thing thinking that if he downplayed and made it seem right. kind of negligible, it would help his election. And he's, a, he's just a total narcissist. He could care less about people. Well, he that, could that, really that, care less. The thing is, though, when he put a mask on, remember what he said? He said, I look pretty good with this mask on. Yeah. 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 Right. So he wouldn't have even said they're uncomfortable. He would have said, boy, I look I look great. There you go. That's all he all he had to do. Somebody had to somebody had to tell him that it made his face look thinner or something like that. And he would have worn it every single day. So, you know, but I don't know. Oh, women uh, women think he's gone from an eight to a ten with that map. <laughs> that's right. From a ten to a twelve. Oh, that's exactly right. He's off the charts now. Off right. the charts. Those big hands. Uh all right, let's let's move on here for just a second. Actually, there was some pretty big news this week in in the social media world, in which I believe forty eight states have signed on to this uh, antitrust lawsuit against Facebook. Now we are on Facebook Live as we speak. This is a medium and a platform that I use uh, to get my stuff out there, as does ML, and and uh, it's kind of important. We all use it for a lot of different purposes, but part of me is really excited at the prospect of somehow taking this company down a couple of notches because they have been incredibly irresponsible in the way that they've handled a lot of things. And they have also been incredibly resistant to any type of regulation of the platform. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, Mark Zuckerberg is not a sympathetic dude. Uh, he is not. He, he's no. just one of those guys that, you know, yeah, kind of, he just has that punchable face. And and I don't want to mean, punch anybody. The, but, the, the other thing, which is really just, I mean, it's it's you know free market capitalism and all that stuff but between facebook and and google they have really sucked a lot of the air out of advertising for for other publications and really put a lot of of, of voices out out of business in, mm -hmm. you know in, in the journalism business yeah, I, but I mean, anybody, I, I'm not sure, we haven't seen really massive antitrust legislation in this country, I don't think, since probably the breakup of AT&T uh, back uh, in Microsoft. the 80s. Oh, Microsoft, that's Microsoft. right, that's right, but they still, and Microsoft is not the same company that they were at the time, uh, they don't have the market dominance they once did, they are it's still- news in the free press, there was an attempt. Uh, very yeah. true, but I mean, so so what does anybody think? I mean, is Facebook the same thing if they somehow get stripped of of Instagram and and what's uh, WhatsApp, or does it matter? Well, was one of the two attorney generals who didn't sign on the attorney general of Texas? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> I, know I have to find out. I have to find yeah. that one out. Yeah, uh, probably because if he's California. for it, I'm against it. <laughs> <laughs> so no, yeah, nobody's really put a lot of thought into that one, eh? I mean, it's, no, it's I, I have ages, but. No, the, 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 uh, so first of all, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, so my, my podcast is live streamed on Facebook, but we can't post our website. Whenever you put our web address in there, it says it can't be shared because it violates community standards, but Facebook doesn't give you an opportunity to appeal. It doesn't explain specifically what you've done to, right. to get on that list. And so, which isn't, don't cry for me, but what I'm saying is, there's no due process with them. They are a tyranny. And, and I guess it's our fault for wanting to be part of the empire. But when Mark Zuckerberg is told your platform is horrible, it's, it's destroying humanity, what does he say? Well, AI is going to fix it. So you're yeah. going to destroy humanity and, and we should wait while you, while you ravage well, us until you can have while uh, computer robots save us. I mean, I've seen this movie. Yes. And Nancy has too. And it doesn't end so well for Arnold Schwarzenegger, but, but then there are sequels. All tech companies are like that though. And it, it's like, if you have a problem with Facebook, with Google, with, with anything, if you're, I mean, I'm trying to get out of an automatic savings app that I signed up for a couple of years ago called capital. And I can't get close to anybody. It's I just keep re getting reference to the same FAQs. It's like, 
if you were standing outside the Sears Tower in Chicago on the sidewalk, like screaming up at the, um, you know, the executive floor, you know, because you have a problem with something you bought at Sears, you know, it's the same, it's the same thing. They just, they, they outsourced it or they have, um, you know, automated it or something. And, you know, I'm sure that's great for their bottom line, but if you're, your customer it's terrible and so, they're the only game in town so. so it's our fault for still using it so i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna uh, i'm not gonna abrogate my responsibility i'm i'm part of the problem so 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 i mea culpa on that one but these are the new companies the tech companies they act exactly like standard oil did over 120 years ago if there's a competitor out there they buy it if right. they've got all the oil wells Great. Now they buy the railroads, you know, if right. they buy all the railroads and they buy all the coal mines so they can supply the coal to the railroad. I mean, we've seen this before and we know what to do. Break so it. it up. It'd be interesting to see what they decide to do, but it will be many, many years. Uh, I think before this is resolved, uh, these cases tend to move at a glacial pace, but uh, Nancy, you, you look like you wanted to say something. No, I just wanted to say, oh. I agree with ML. Ah. It's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it, it's, it's it's infuriating. All I know is that a bunch of Steve's friends are going to be making a lot of money in this case because Ooh, there's going to yeah. be a lot of billable hours on this one. Um, <laughs> I don't know if any of these are Steve's friends, though. Yeah, I'm right. just like, kidding. Those, those are the people that work over at Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. I don't have yeah. that. Uh, all right, real quick, um, a couple of different things that we want to get to here. Uh, well, fortunately for the Michigan Wolverines, it looks like this cluster F of a football season is over. They canceled their game against Ohio State. There's no Nothing about this college football season that has been smooth in any way. We've seen game cancellations due to COVID, uh, all kinds of different stuff that's been going on there. Um, and obviously the Ohio State fans think Michigan is chickening out, but uh, oh, and I think half their roster has got some sort of COVID symptoms or something like that. So it makes sense to not play the game. And mercifully for Michigan, they won't have to get beat by 60, 70 points. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> it, it, look, it was an awful year for, for Michigan football teams uh, in the uh, Mr. Fishman, who is a uh, proud member of the University of Michigan Athletic Department, and ML Elric, who has gone to, I think, every Michigan State game uh, pre-COVID that there was. Um, you know, this season's got to have a giant asterisk. Whoever becomes the national champion, is that one that, like, we look back 20 years from now and say, oh, yeah, well, that was, that was like a strike short in season kind of a thing? I, I think that's exactly what it'll be like. I was about to say it before you said it. You know, you just have these years that are weird. But I will say this, though. I, I don't watch really much college football. I don't really watch much pro football either. But the teams, I've seen Ohio State a couple times. And okay. if they're not one of the best four teams in the country, i got to see the other four that are better than them. Right. At the end of the day, the best teams will be playing. Whether If, if they play 10 games, 12 games, with Ohio State's going to go 10 or 12 and nothing as long as they're playing in the Big Ten. Alabama's going to win. Clemson's going to win. I think the real question in the, is, is why bother with all these tournaments? You may as well just have a little four. There's, there's three of the same are going to be there every year, and whoever has a great year sneaks in. Yeah. Like State did, you know, the one year, and then you go and you get killed. And it's nothing against State, but you're playing against pros, basically. Yeah, yeah. We actually should have gone a couple of years ago, but we got screwed in Notre Dame, which happens a lot and not just altar boys. But um, <laughs> I, I, Notre, I, Notre Dame, Notre Dame I and I read somewhere that, special treatment. Yes, absolutely. I, I thought I read somewhere that this year won't even count towards eligibility for players. So if you're a senior, I think you could come back. So if that's true and, and, and don't hold me to that, but if that's true, the NCAA has basically said this year didn't happen. It was like, Patrick Duffy waking up in the shower on Dallas. Bobby never, never left. And maybe I'm dating myself, but back then I was the only person who would date me. So that's why I was watching <laughs> Dallas on a Friday night. I wasn't out there with, uh, with Steve and, and Alan, uh, you know, entertaining the ladies or Nancy macing the guys. <laughs> so, so Craig was out there too. I never, he never called me. Oh. Craig, Craig, Craig to just to, to finish up the sports stuff. I don't know if you guys saw, but Coach Izzo made the really, really good point about what went on with Michigan State's basketball team flying to Virginia for absolutely no reason, only to be told at 1130 at night that the Virginia team had COVID problems. The, the NCAA, which is nothing but a RICO organization, in my opinion, anyway, and if there's any phrase, I think I've said this before, you guys, that irritates me 
it's the, the phrase student athlete to, to refer to football, basketball, and hockey players as student athletes anymore. When I played, we were student athletes. Now they're not student athletes. But the fact, as Coach Izzo said, that there's no standard that applies to each conference, at least when the NFL, uh, the NBA did what they did or the NHL did what they did, they locked them all in a bubble. They had rules that applied to everybody. How is it possible that Michigan State, because they're risking their own self every time they're getting on a plane. Why should those kids and the coaches have to get on a plane here, fly to Virginia, and then they find out at 1130 at night, you've come for no reason. Now you're staying in a hotel and they do all the crap they do, but it's risk. And then you go back home. If the NCAA had, had any, uh, I don't know if I would call it control, if they cared at all about the players, they would insist on some standardized things that every conference, everybody's going to have to do. And I think you guys might remember at the beginning, well, we'll play, but it'll only be conference games. Then the TV guys start, wait a minute, wait, we need Duke versus Michigan State. Yeah, where's Michigan our ACC challenge? challenge? Yeah, we got to get back to it because it's, why? Because it's dinero and everybody needs the money. And then the NCAA folds. And that, that's really the sickest thing about this whole thing. And if any of these basketball kids get really sick with this kind of thing that's going on, then it, it sits at the doorstep of the NCAA, in my opinion. Well, the conferences have a lot to do with this as well, because I mean, look at just the rule change to allow Ohio State to play in the in the Big Ten championship game, even though they haven't played enough games to qualify. But they know they want them in there. They can't have Indiana versus you know uh, whoever's on the other Northwestern on the other yeah. side. That would be that would be ratings death, and there would be no chance to get their team into you know the, the big uh, the big dance. And so I mean. The college athletics is, like I said, I, I I personally am willing to accept my teams not being that good if it means they don't cross that threshold into semi-pro sports, which is basically what is happening, um, especially on the football level. It, it's just the haves and have-nots. The difference is, is getting to be so great. But what do you have to do? What part of your soul do you have to sell to get there? I, I just don't think it's worth it. And, and frankly, if that means that Michigan-Michigan State is an entertaining game every year, but Michigan's going to lose to Ohio State – I'm okay with that. I just am. So I, I'm against paying cash to players. I, I think the compensation, the benefits they receive is adequate for student athletes. So that's where I start. But for all the reasons Steve has laid out so well, it's hard for a guy like me to argue <clears throat> that, uh, that these people are not professionals. I mean, this, is, this, this season undercuts every one of us who believes that uh, that you still should have some modicum of amateurism, that this is still about being a teammate. This is still about representing the colors of the school where getting you play. Getting an education. Yeah, yeah. And, and the education is great. You're getting a free education. I'm paying for two kids' college. I know what a benefit that is. You're getting tutoring. You're getting nutrition. You're getting coaching. You're getting instruction. You're getting a, an incredible amount of pressure. So I don't mean to say that that this is easy to be an athlete. It's, it's terribly difficult. Um but but to say that I mean this is it's a farce it's an absolute farce and if if Ohio State is clearly one of the best teams in the country in the CFP ratings which they are they don't need to play a title game they can go when there's a six and zero best team in the country and Steve's right they are one of the top four but nobody's going to watch Nerd Bowl with yeah. the Hoosiers and with uh, with <laughs> Northwestern. Well, I, I, we well, we got to have the behemoths out there throwing guys into the stands, even if the stands are empty. It's well, I, it's I'm disgraceful. I'm, I'm actually kind of in favor of Ohio State just joining the SEC and just for football. That, they should. That, that's what I've been that's saying new, for 15 years. That's the new minor leagues. Um, they, go ahead. Seriously. All right, we can well, have we, a whole show one day. If we, we can have a whole show just on college athletics, but you know, I don't know how many people are give a shit about it. But well, we could have more than you realize. As, uh, a but person, you know as a person who grew up in Columbus, Ohio, I could also add the sexual assault angle. So, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we've got to move on to Schmuck of the Week because we're running okay. out of time here. Uh, who wants to lead us off? Uh, by the way, Schmuck of the Week, it is the Donald J. Trump Schmuck of the Week Award. The J stands for genius. Uh, Nancy wants to go first today. I will go. I have, I have. Uh, you know how when a team wins uh, an Olympic medal and they put the whole team on the on the medal stand. I've got four guys on my, uh, on my platform. And, uh, I think, you know, who they are, uh, Tim Wahlberg, Jack Bergman, Bill Heisenga, and John Mulinar, who are the, Oh, was that you? <laughs> 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 so that's why I wanted to go first. Cause I knew somebody else was going to take it. Um, who are the four Michigan representatives 
who are congressional representatives who, because they are in fear of being primaried by somebody even more of a right wing psychopath than all of they are, are willing to do one of the most racist, blatantly racist things that is happening right now on a public stage, which is to try to disenfranchise the predominantly black voters of Wayne County because because they lack. Very, very good. And and so Fishman, you're out or you got another potential oh, nominee that you wanted to get I'll to. I'll have to go last. Let me think while you guys. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with Alan Langle. I'm going to go with the Texas attorney general. Oh. I mean, I think it's so interesting that the guy's under investigation by the FBI for bribery and he is leading the charge here with, with the most ridiculous, uh, you know, lawsuit. I mean, what would be really just more criminal than that would be if the Supreme Court decided to hear the case, which would just be totally equally insane. And I, I think you would see that as the end of the Supreme Court. But I would, I would not put it by Clarence Thomas to to be in favor of hearing it. Him wow. and, and Alito. Maybe, maybe I, you know, I can't see it because this I is can't. it's so outside the norm of what's I ever think been Robert done. Clearly, would send a message to the court in a meeting and say, "This will be the death of our court." Could you imagine yeah. though, if they were to allow even even to hear this, is going to give somebody else this notion that, "Hey, okay, I don't like what right. California is doing with emissions rules. I'm going to sue them for Michigan because I don't want them dictating what our cars can do." And then you've got Oregon, who's going to sue Washington just because they think that the apples are are better. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that this would open up a, a giant can of worms, and the Supreme Court does not want to be playing referee for petty disputes other than like water rights issues and things like that going forward uh, with the states. This would be a stupid idea if they even were to consider it. And I think Alito and Thomas are even smart enough to realize that that would be a bad right. idea. I hope I'm right about that. Hope so, but, uh, By the way, if there's anybody no that's ever, ever been so obviously fishing for a pardon, it is the Texas attorney general. Uh, I, I was so oh, glad Dana Nessel came out and just, you well, know. She's absolutely right. I mean, the guy just had some uh, subpoenas dropped on him yesterday, as a matter of fact. Yes. So, um, but anyway, all right. Uh, ML, who do you got for schmuck of the week? Uh, I'm just doing it right now. Um, do you want me to go first? So you can no, this is it. who I have. <laughs> that. Can you tell who this man is? I He's cannot. somebody who knows what the truth is. He knows what's right. He knows his time has come, but he would rather destroy this country to save his skin from a criminal prosecution than admit that it's time to be a noble person. Now, actually, I put a question mark here because it actually fits quite a few people who are in public <laughs> office today. So I will let the, uh, our good listeners and, and viewers uh, put the face into that picture. But there are quite a few people, far too many people from my country, love, my, my, my comfort level, who have put themselves before their country, before their oath, and for very selfish, venal reasons. Um, and and actually, you know what? I don't want to give anybody too much of a clue because it, this applies to other people. It looks like this is dripping a little bit of something down its head. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe that maybe that helps a little bit. But I also, <laughs> as as a more local flavored uh, schmuck of the week. Anybody who doesn't read my my extensive and superlative Mike Duggan profile in the Detroit Free Press, it was good. I wanted First to tell you, schmuck of the week, and it features <laughs> wisdom from our host Craig Folly. I heard I heard a couple comments to that effect that it was good. So well, it was very it was very thorough, and I was going to say that people should go check it out at freep.com. It is, I believe, uh, for subscribers, um, and uh, it's that's ninety nine cents. It's a Sunday centerpiece. I yep, exactly. And, and uh, like I said, it was very, very thorough and uh, it mentions all sides of the man. So some of the stuff that he's done well, some of the stuff that people think he hasn't done well, a lot about what drives the man and um, you know, otherwise. And of course he did announce that he was running for a third term just yesterday. Uh, but I stay away from Duggan. Just and Bob because, Carmack got in there too. Everybody got in there. Everybody's in there. I'll say, well, know. Nancy, watch yourself. <laughs> it was a good job, Mike. I, th I thought uh, I thought it was really well done, Mr. Elric. Yep. Uh, all right, so let's see. I I'm going to do mine because uh, Steve wants a little more time. I'm going with somebody named Dara Kashrashai, who is the CEO at Uber. And this person, of course, uh, tweets out yesterday, um, I'm asking governors in all 50 states plus D.C. to prioritize drivers and delivery people for early vaccine access. These frontline workers should get the vaccine before people like me. Sounds very, very noble, and and I appreciate the sentiment. 
at the same time, here's something that needs to be considered. Uber fought tooth and nail to make sure that that law in California went down that would have made them employees of Uber so they could remain independent workers so they wouldn't have to pay for their freaking health care. Yeah. So don't tell me you care so much about your driver's health and security if you are willing to spend millions of dollars lobbying against actually having to pay for it. These Uber drivers do not make a lot of money. They're getting screwed by that company every single day. And you fight to make sure that you don't have to give them health care, but then you care so much that you want them first in line. Why? Because if your drivers aren't sick, you keep making money. But if your drivers are sick, they're going to quit. So don't give me this bullshit. I'm sorry. That is just it's such a self-serving. Right, evil. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> that, sounds like a, that sounds like a mega schmuck, or one might even say a uh, really big okay. schmuck or... Yeah. And she's a schmuck head in this case. Or a, uh, yeah. a well, it's just I'm waiting for somebody to say Uber schmuck, but I'm just going to take the yeah. cheap one myself. An Uber schmuck. I mean, when you look at that campaign that they ran in California, it was just ridiculous. Um, and, well, and uh, anyway, all right, uh, Steve, did you have some time to gather your thoughts? I, I am ready. By the way, he would be a it, it'd be a Gansa schmuck, right? Uh, <laughs> a Gansa schmuck is a really big schmuck in Yiddish. Okay, <laughs> so for me, th th this guy's a contestant every week, but this week he outdid himself. And I have to go with Mitch McConnell, mm. who Ugh. sits there and doesn't even pretend, in a sense, really, that he gives a flying fuck about the citizens of the, his state or anywhere else in this country. And announces, was it yesterday at the end of the day, I think, there will be no COVID payments. There'll be nothing until the end of the year. We're not doing anything. And you really got to get up early in the morning to be that inconsiderate. And the fact that he's been elected how many times now in the state of Kentucky? You just wonder, are there that many rich people? Kentucky's a poor state. How Ooh. the hell does he do it? How does he convince people to vote for him when he shows complete disregard for the welfare right. of citizens? Right. All he cares right. about are rich people. And so I have to give Mitch, now that, uh, that uh, the bimbo queen took away my four guys from the, from the state of Michigan, <laughs> um, I have to give it to Mitch McConnell. I mean, that, that, that one there, uh, that got me. That's a well, classic. You know, keep in mind, Kentucky like also a has fallen off. The guy that's so well liked that his neighbor attacked him on his lawnmower one day. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that's Kentucky for you. All right. Well, we're gonna have to wrap it up. Uh, I want to thank my guests for being here today. ML, always a pleasure to see you. ML Elric, of course, of the Detroit Free Press. And again, look for his podcast, ML Soul of Detroit, available anywhere you get podcasts. Correct, sir? <laughs> yes, sir. It's even uh, in Ann Arbor. There you go. All right. Also, Steve Fishman there. He's there got his go. mask on. Perfect. There Very we go. Good. I got the M's. <laughs> right. Appreciate you being here, sir. Alan Langle, of course, the uh, founder and uh, and editor at uh, Deadline Detroit. Thank you, sir. We always Thank appreciate you. it. And continue to rest up that knee. Nancy oh, yeah. Derringer, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Always Couple fun. Other quick thank yous. Michael Lucido, thank you for engineering the broadcast. Uh, I'm sorry you have to sit here and watch the whole thing while you're doing this, but it's, I can see him on the screen. His dog is sitting on his lap right now. We appreciate Michael for doing his job for us. And also uh, Greenhouse in Wald Lake. Thanks for the new sponsor of the program. I always appreciate that. And thanks to all of you for watching all the comments that come in. I appreciate it. Don't forget, this will be available on DeadlineDetroit.com just a bit later. And the podcast version will be available a little bit later today as well. So thanks to everyone. Have a great weekend. And Alan, stay home safely. <laughs> My name's M.L. Elric. I'm an investigative reporter and a connoisseur of fine yogurts. I know a little bit about Detroit. I know a little bit about Deadlines. And I'm asking you to become a member of DeadlineDetroit.com, like me. I'm not asking you to do anything I wouldn't do. I'm making a monthly donation. My wife is making a monthly donation. I know that seems redundant, but they need the money, and the money goes to a good place. Getting the story out, getting the truth out. Because if we don't support local journalism, there's some people a couple blocks away from here who are going to get away with a whole bunch of stuff that's going to cost you a whole lot more than just a few bucks out of your pocket every month. Go to DeadlineDetroit.com, become a member. You'll see it's really easy at the top of the website. Give early, give often, give generously. Just give a damn. That's the best way I know how. Stressed out? Need sleep? The cold weather bringing out those aches and pains or arthritis? There's never been a better time to try cannabis. Check out the greenhouse of Wald Lake and learn about the natural way to relax and escape all that 2020 stress. The Greenhouse is locally owned, and they love helping people who are new to cannabis. They've got a great flower selection of the best Michigan-grown buds and the biggest pre-roll selection around. 
Don't want to smoke? No problem. There's vape carts, tinctures, concentrates, and everyone's favorite, edibles. Like gummies, chocolates, peppermint bark, breath sprays, even the original Mackinac Island fudge. So check out the greenhouse of Wald Lake. 21 and over welcome, no med card needed. They also offer senior and veterans discounts and have a great loyalty rewards program. The Greenhouse of Wald Lake. That's greenhousemi.com.